Get a king six offsuit. Folds. There is. Now here comes Chris raising again, this time with a nice hand, two jacks. Very folding. Raise. And here comes Daniel, three betting with ace queen. Why not? Eric going out. New better. Chris calls. So here we go, a pop between Daniel and Chris. This time Chris with the best hand, two jacks. Here we go with our flop. Oh, good flop for Chris. He's got an overpair and a straight draw. But Daniel bets out 20,000. Chris pops it up to 40,000 more. Daniel's going to call this, though. Can't blame Chris for raising there. He has an overpair and a straight draw. They are playing fast here. Well, deuce of diamonds on the turn. Daniel checks. Here comes Chris, 40,000. Just a horrible, ugly flop and a turn for Daniel right now. For the first time today, we see a little thought process going on here. And what Daniel's thinking right now is his buddy Eric just played ace queen, won a monster pot off Chris, and now he's got the ace queen, and look what's going to happen. And you see one to reach for his cards and lay it down. The crowd moans, and now Daniel giggles. He does throw it away. I want to display a poker by the man that has a true day job, Chris Hinchcliffe. Oh, looks a little bit like Paul Bunyan, doesn't he, Vince? Well, I tell you, Chris definitely didn't get this far by playing passive. This guy takes command, win or lose, he plays his hand properly. Very impressive. Well, we started with 546, six remain. Stay tuned, we'll be right back on the World Poker Tour. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour and the biggest floating poker game in history. Well, these young guys are tough poker players, Vance. They live, eat, breathe, sleep poker 24 hours a day. These guys absolutely love to play poker. Well, they are very casual right now. It's like they could be hanging out in a sauna bath together, just enjoying the afternoon. <laughs> Eric throwing away the 4-3. Z folds and Scotty with two fives. Pops it up to 40,000. Finally, with a chance to play something, Chris has gone out. Barry folds. But Daniel quickly calls with King Jack behind him. So it's King Jack for Daniel, pair of fives for Scotty. Here's our flop. Oh, and it's top pair for Daniel, and he quickly checks. Little crafty check there. He's setting a little trap. Yep, it's going to be a check raise. That's what's happened. Oh. Scotty calls it. Reluctantly. Well, Scotty's got what we call presto, and he's trying to hit a presto right here, a third five. Turn Curry coming up. Can Scotty get lucky? No. He doesn't do it. Well, Daniel now has kings and jacks. That's his 40 thou. Scotty's got a headache every time he picks up a pair. Take it, bro. He has yet to win a pot with him. Either one. Either one's got Daniel. you. Daniel <laughs> showing. That one got you. <laughs> so that. A little showboating there. Now, I know my friend Mike Sexton hates it when players show their cards when they're not even called. Hates that. Well, Vance, you're giving them information and they haven't paid for it. Well, it's called advertisement. But, you know, some players actually use this as a specific tactic. Well, even though I don't like it, that is true, Vance. Some do. And Shauna Hyatt has explored some of those strategies as to why players show their cards on this week's Poker Corner, brought to you by Anheuser World Select. Lane Flack loves to do it. Mike Sexton says you should never do it. To show or not to show? That is the question. Let's say you're holding a five deuce off suit and you bet big. I'm all in. Everyone folds and you win. Do you show your cards or keep the little secret to yourself? Oh, oh Vince, look at this, he's showing it. Oh, he's gonna rub it in, beautiful. He's showing it to Jack too. Showboating has been around for a long time. And so is the debate on whether it's the right thing to do. You should never, ever, 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 ever show your cards. Again, I like to show them about uh, five high, no hand. I have never, ever shown my cards. I don't believe in showing cards at all. Players show their cards usually one of two reasons. I know what I'm showing, I know why I'm showing it, and I know what they now know. I'm going to use that information that I've given them against them. You know, I'm setting them up. And reason number two... I'll show people a bluff if I think I could put them on tilt. I bluffed the guy who was eight high in a huge pot yesterday, and I showed it to him, and he went berserk, and I knew he was going to go berserk. So, is it a mistake to show your cards? 
showing your cars, it's like, like Coke giving away their secret formula. Or is it something you should be proud of? You should have called, but you folded. Have a nice day. Obviously, there's no easy answer to this question. Never show your cards with no telling what they might be. <laughs> so when it comes to finding a showboat on this ship, you don't have to look very far. Yeah! <laughs> well, Vince, even though we've seen a lot of showboating on the ship this week, we haven't seen too much at the final table tonight. Oh, that's right, but the night is still young, my friend. And here we go again. Going to be on the man from New York's DVZ. And this time he's got a quality hand. He's got queen ten of clubs. I haven't seen him play a pot yet. My fans will get mad if I play this hand. Ooh. Yeah, right. They get more upset if you never play one, Z. <laughs> Scotty going out as well. Chris yeah. going away. Now All Barry right. going up with ace five off suit. Daniel folds. You have ten more, Barry? Eric says, how much more have you got? Ten more thousand. Let's get it in there. Eric, Eric has king six. Barry has ace five. Robin Hood is a slight favorite in his hand. Well, all once right. again, he's all in. Once again, he needs to win a pot to survive and stay alive. Can he do it? <laughs> Here we go with our flop. <laughs> the flop is 10-9-3 with two clubs. So far, Barry's hand still in the lead with the ace high. A couple cards remaining. Can Robin Hood get through the forest? Here's our turn. Well, it's a seven. Now, what that means is if an eight comes up, Eric will make a straight and also win the pot. So Eric can now win with a king, an eight, or a six. Tremendous amount of outs. If he doesn't catch one of those cards, Barry Greenstein is going to double up. Here comes the river. Can Barry hang in there? Yes, he does. Yes, he's caught his pair of fives. Well, Barry Greenstein survives. The crowd cheers. But you can see everybody sitting at that table. They're not cheering, Vince. They want this guy out of here. He is the most successful poker player financially over the last five years of probably anybody in the world. And I tell you, he won a tournament in Tunica. He gave over a million dollars to charity. A very generous man gets a generous river card. My name is Barry Greenstein, and uh, I'm a professional poker player. In college, I made enough to pay expenses. By the time I was in graduate school, it was pretty clear I could make more money playing poker than I could be in a math professor. Well, we still have six players remaining. And at this stage, the chip leader who started the day, Chris Hinchcliffe, is still our chip leader. Then Scotty Wynn on the short stack with only 60000 A million dollars for the first prize, plus the prestige of a WPT title. Eric Lingering going for his second World Poker Tour title this season, as is Barry Greenstein. And Barry takes a look at an 8-3. It is on him right now. He goes away. Daniel going out quickly. <coughs> Eric folding 6-5. It's up to Steve Z. Got Queen 7 offsuit, known as a computer hand. He folds. He doesn't play anything today. Scotty here gonna raise it up with Ace Jack of Spade. Well, we can't blame him for raising here. He's in the small blind with Ace Jack of Spade up against the big blind, but look at this. Chris Hinchcliffe has picked up two jacks and the big blind. Yes, he has. He's got a real hand, and he's re-raised Scotty. He is going to set Scotty all in right here. He's put him all in. Not a great place for Scotty right now. Two big hands here in the blind positions. It's ace jack of spade for Scotty, two jacks for Chris, and right now, Scotty Winner's going to have to get lucky to stay alive, Vince. Oh, he is in trouble. Will he survive? Come back and see when we continue here on the World Poker Tour. in the Sea of Cortez, where it's all chips on deck for poker superstar Scotty Wynn up against a talented amateur who's on the right of his life. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. Let's get right back to the action. So it's ace jack of spade for Scotty, two jacks for Chris. Right now, Scotty Wynn's going to have to get lucky or he's going to be overboard. The man from Vietnam came over to the United States absolutely penniless, turned out to be a champion. He's on the ropes here. Let's see if he can survive. Here we go with a flop. Oh. Scotty's got a shot here. Yep. A lot of outs. Well, he does. He's flopped a nut flush draw, as we say, in spades, and a 10 will make him a straight. So really a good flop for Scotty. He can win the pot with an ace, a 10, or a spade. 
Well, he has some outs. He's got a little potential. What do you think? You think it's coming on the turn or on the river? Turn. I enjoy it better. These two guys joking around, even though a well. huge moment here. Oh, it's a straight. He's done it. He gets it. And Chris high fives him. A good sport. Oh, look okay. at Scotty waving to the crowd, blowing a kiss. He finally won that first part today, Vince. This is my comfort zone. You guys in Jova now. And they're going to throw the next card over. Well, it means nothing. Yeah. There's no card that Chris can win the fight yeah, yeah, with, so Scotty is going to double up here and stay alive. And look at the fan base he has out here. And Vince, you're right, though. In case Scotty gets busted, he's got some jewelry that can go to the pawn shop. He can get back in action, believe me. Quite a character. Scotty win. He's going to stick around. 468 players, by the way, got their way into this online. It is amazing. This is an entire cruise ship that's been chartered just for poker. That's right. Action's going to be on Perry. Looks at Ace Deuce of Clubs, and he's going to raise it. Perry comes in for 40000 Daniel yeah, quickly going out. Now it's around to Eric, who's got an interesting king-queen offsuit. He's thinking about it. Well, he's going to respect Barry Greenstein raising in first position. He lays down the king-queen. Stevie Z, ex-hippie, throwing away queen three. Now, Scotty win. Tough choice for him right now. He's looking at king nine of diamonds. Normally a pretty good starting hand. Well, he's only got about 30 or 40,000 left. What's going through his mind is, do I put it all in right here, right now? Or do I get the button the next hand and get to see five more hands before I get to put all my money in? All right now, Scotty, hanging off a dear life. Yeah, got a tough decision here with the king nine of diamonds. You know he gives Barry respect, especially if he raises in first position here. You know, when you're in a short stack, you got to play something. This is king nine suited here. Usually when a player flashes his hand that high, it's not a good sign. They usually fold. And he, he lays does. it down, wants to pick a better spot. But notice Chris calls with the four nine of clubs here. Yes, he does. So he calls one more bet out of position here with the four nine of clubs. Ace deuce against nine four clubs. Here we go with our flop. Look at this, Ooh. it's 10, 8, 7, two clubs well, on the board. We're going to see some fireworks here. Chris has an open end straight and a flush draw, and Barry has what we call the nut flush draw. And hey, look at this, Barry was raised this. And Chris quickly calls him. Both guys have four of the flush, very interesting. Here's the turn. Oh, the jacket clubs comes off. <laughs> now look at Chris, he checks his flush. Yes, he does. He's going to try to trap, little does he know. Well, this man is going to destroy him. Yeah. He's heading for Whitewater here because he's going to put his own foot in the trap. Chris he checked Razor yeah. with a flush. You can't blame him for doing that. Oh, Barry's going to swab the deck with him right now. Well, Barry's probably going to put all his chips in the pot. Yes, that's exactly what he's going to do. Or is it? He goes all in for 110000 here. Chris happy to call him with a flush, but he's not going to be happy when Barry turns up his hand. Wow. He's actually one card. He could make the straight flush. That would be a miracle one carter. Well, you're right. He can catch the ten of clubs and make a straight flush. That's what he has to have to knock Barry Greenstein out of this tournament. He must make a straight flush. That is just unfortunate for Chris right now, but there is one card left. So I'm drawing. So I'm drawing dead. Barry Greenstein in great shape here to double up. His opponent has one card in the deck. He can catch the win. The ten of clubs to make a straight flush. Here we go. Construction worker usually hammering nails into wood. This time he wants to hammer a straight flush. Can he get it? No, he doesn't do it. He's showing no emotion, but feeling good inside. Barry Greenstein has doubled up and won a nice pot here. Scary way This is a guy that is used to winning. He wins in all the huge side games in L.A. and Vegas. He's won a major championship on the World Poker Tour already this year. A great man. He's back in action. You know what the best thing about this trip is, Vance? that the whole ship has been taken over by poker players from bow to stern. That is true. A lot of bad beat stories. But I'll tell you something. Our own Sean Hyatt is out among our peers with the two reasons why everyone's having such a good time. Sean? Some people like to play poker and others like to party. But when you're on a party poker million cruise, you better like both because you can't have poker without a party. Steve.